sector and I want to talk mainly about the energy sector. And the areas I want to touch about Kenya is the, the experience we have in the green energy sector. The opportunities in Kenya for the green energy sector that we have. Kenya has also positioned itself in the green energy sector. We'll talk about that one. The financing of the energy sector in Kenya and the most important is the challenges that we've encountered. So really, I want to be brief, so bear with me. I know this is not a lunch when people are really fed very well. And there must be, there could be a bit of dosing, but bear with me, I'll be very quick and very fast. So your excellency, the host, architect, or I mean the can, the business, Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Minister of uh, uh, Mines and Steel Development. Your Excellency, so I mean, as a minister from Nigeria. Colleague ministers from other countries in Africa who are here. I have my neighbor, Tanzania, with me here. Uh, Permanent secretaries. Principal secretaries present, members of the diplomatic corps and heads of mission, representatives of our development partners present, all protocols of staff, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to join you here today to give these remarks. I not have been enjoying so much this morning and I've learned quite a lot. And my job here is to add just a little to it. And there are so many things I'm sure many of us are learning. I'm extremely delighted to attend this, the Nigeria Africa Natural Resources and Energy Investment Summit, whose theme uh, towards a green Africa is going to guide our discussion on development of green uh, power projects in Africa towards protecting the planet from climate change and global warming. In Kenya, we do support the climate change initiative, but the most important thing that I've learned, that I want to stress is, let us make maximum use of our resources in addressing this not copying what we are being told from the other side, and that's abandoning very, very important resources we have like that. You have as South Africa, natural resources and industry leaders, together with environmental NGOs, to define the sector's role in delivery, low carbon future, and focus on sustainable development of Africa's natural resources, through knowledge sharing, investment, and trade. I'm glad to note that the summit will dedicate a multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary platform to marketing the banking of projects within Africa natural resource and energy sector. And also to raise capital for such a project and to share knowledge on developing policies to accelerate the development of energy resources of every African nation sustainable. And in this regard, I'm really here that we are here as brothers and sisters in Africa, where we have a lot of challenges, and some of the challenges are very common. This morning, I'm sure we noted some of the outages. I thought that was the Robin when it happened, because that's a very common thing which we are really fighting now. And I'm sure we can be able to copy uh, to assist each other because this outage is out of problem. Discussion will also further provide opportunities to attract investment for green energy transition and sustainability in development and the financing of renewable energy and natural gas projects. Ladies and gentlemen, at the continental level, the aspiration is to provide affordable energy for all, 
as framed in the African Union Agenda 2063, and as the goal of environmentally sustainable and climate resilient economy and the community. The inspiration aims to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Energy is viewed as a very critical service to our people, our businesses, and the industry, both more and less. And it is energy that will drive our economy at an affordable, reliable, and sustainable manner. As it is, our continent is endowed with abundant renewable energy resources such as hydropower, solar, wind, geothermal, and about energy, which is well harnessed that enable us to meet our aspirations. The big question, therefore, we have, which we all need to answer, how then can we harness these resources to meet our aspirations and for the strategic development of Africa? Distinguished participants, in Kenya we have a 22-year development plan, which we call Vision 2030, and it started from the year 2008. The vision has been implemented through five-year medium-term plan. We realize that energy is very critical to the realization of the vision, which seeks to transform Kenya into a newly industrialized and middle-income country that provides a high quality of life in a clean and secure environment for all it is stated by the year 2030. Implementation of a third term plan, which is started from the year 2018 to 2022, of the vision 2030, this incorporated four major areas of focus, and we call them the big four agendas in our country. And these are ensuring food security, affordable housing, manufacturing development, and affordable healthy care for all. This is what, what is right in Kenya at the moment, and a lot is being done in it. All these sectors, energy continues to play a, a major enabling role of catalyzing development. To actualize the aspiration, the government has over the last eight years embarked on an ambitious journey to provide access to competitively priced, reliable, quality, safe, and sustainable energy. This has been through provision of, of various enabling environments, and in this case, we have come up with quite a number of legislation. And the chief among them is the feeding tariff policy which we started and we have been revising it from time to time. Uh, the latest one was revised in 20, last year 2021. The renewable energy options policy of 2021, the review of energy policy and the energy act culminating in the enactment of the energy act in 2019. I'm pleased to advise that the Kenya joined the Sustainable Energy for All initiative in 2014 and specified targets for achieving universal access to modern energy access services, doubling the, the global rate of energy efficiency improvement and doubling the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix by the year 2030. Ladies and gentlemen, in Kenya, we continue to develop a range of the advanced green energy sources from hydro, geothermal, solar, wind, and biomass. The country's geothermal resource is the major one, and it is rated at 10,000 megawatts. So far, we have, we have exploited 
less than about about less than 100 megawatts. So we have many more power plants to develop, and this is a natural resource. We are putting a lot of emphasis, and even the cost of energy from that one is much more affordable to our uh, to our, to our population. We are also doing a lot of development on hydro. Even though this is a bit much more limited, and of course, many other areas of development. We currently have a total developed capacity of about 3,000, and so far, 85% of our households are connected to wind energy to electricity. The 15% that we have that remains is still to be completed in the next two or so years. Can you develop? And it's operating one of the largest wind farm power in Africa called Electric Ghana with a capacity of 310 megawatts. Currently, in the country, renewable energy accounts for 73% of our installed power generation and for more than 92% of power generation from the green energy is the fight for you. The government target is to achieve 100% zero energy by the year 2030, and we are paying very close attention to our competitive age in terms of renewable energy. On the side of our energy, the government is committed to achieving the target of its population, enjoying access to modern bioenergy services, including 100% access to modern cooking services by the year 2028. So we have very big target to achieve this one, but most important, we are maximizing the usage of our local resources, natural resources. Improvement in the bioenergy uh, sector will play a critical role in achieving this target through sustainable production and efficient use of biomass, waste to energy conversion, and development of biofuel. Currently, the usage of more than cooking facility solutions stands at about 1%, and as and I said, our plan is to split take up to provide the 59% remaining clean cooking by the year 2028. So we have very, very big target and we are really working very hard to make sure that we achieve that by the year 2028. There is a different. The energy sector in Kenya has a serious exponential growth since the year 2010. In comparison, we can change it. The country has undergone in the last eight years is really very enormous. And the statistics evidently point to that. The exponential growth has been supported by huge investment generally in this sector. In the year 2018 alone, the country invested up to $1.4 billion in green energy development. This made Kenya run the best in Africa and then together with Morocco, and I believe there are some others who are coming up, and I'm very soon I'm sure they will be joining us. The two men the top ten will be even many other developing countries, including even Europe, where most of the clean energy uh, equipment are sourced from. As growth in future demand is projected, there are opportunities to invest in the sector, particularly green generation, including a number of multi pronged measures across the sector to continually improve efficiency. In particular, the focus will be power utility, reduce power outages, that's like what we have here in the data, and the losses. Our losses currently start about 22, about a year ago they were about 26. That is the power generated compared to the power sold. And this is one area where we are really putting a lot of emphasis. We have started reducing this one 
the, in the first about one year we have reduced by four percent and our aim in the next few years about maybe four five years with the rest we should get 14 percent because one percent loss in units turns out to be about 2.5 billion per shilling that's about more than about uh, that's about about 25 million dollars in a year. That's a lot of money. There are some challenges you've been experiencing, of course, in, in Greece. There are many challenges. And one of the biggest challenges within the country is, of course, the fight to move away from the traditional sources of electricity, some of which while we are forcing us even to import fuel from very far countries, not even from Africa. So this is one of the areas we are really fighting to make sure that we turn into exploiting our natural resources. And the chief among which ones is the geothermal. We have a lot of geothermal resources, which comes from even the Ethiopia, Sudan, all the way to Kenya and Tanzania. And the, of course, our neighbors, we are talking them to find out whether we can be able to give them more consultants and you need it at because we are doing quite well on the geothermal, which is started on the small scale, and so far now is a major contributor of electricity in Kenya. On the solar and the wind, of course, there are so many other issues which we do have. Solar is not a base load. Solar, you can use it when there is enough the sunshine, but at night. It turns out to give you zero. This one of the challenges of solar, of course, is a real energy, but uh, it is useful to some extent. The other one of the developments we have talked about is made a journey, it's a long way from conception to production. It takes a long time, sometimes five to eight years, and the heavy upfront cost, but so far, because we have, we, have, we have done a lot of exploitation, we know that even if you are spending a lot of money up front, finally it pays off. On the hydro development, we have a major problem all over the world and especially in Africa. Variations in the hydrology and the climate change do cause a lot of problems because sometimes when there is a very extreme drought, you end up having no water and the hydro becomes a major problem for us. But hydro geothermal runs for based on crowd, and sometimes in most cases the production is about 98% continuously, therefore making the cost of electricity very, very low. Other challenge, of course, which is a, a factor for all of us, and it's something that we can be able to sort out as Africans, the financing. Because most of the financing we find from other developed countries, when they are giving you the financing, almost uh, the conditions are much bigger. But that is one major constraint or challenge that we have to solve ourselves. Working together as partners. This is one challenge that I've been experiencing all through wherever I've, I've, I've been. I'm meeting some of many other colleagues from other African countries, and even in case we talk about the money, we need a lot of partners. There are so many times you find that your neighbor could be having a lot of competitive advantages in developing very cheap and reliable power. But you find it so difficult to start talking to the neighbor. So this one challenge that Africans must come together and solve it. Otherwise, we become our biggest enemy and problem. We need to come together all the time as we are doing now. I believe this will work, will be one of the solutions. These are some of the things we really need to solve. And I'm sure our presence through the uh, African Union is tackling that. That's one major aim. Ladies and gentlemen, the energy sector in our country is undergoing a lot of reform. And most of these reforms are aimed at making the energy provision much more responsive to the customer. 
And in this regard, there are quite a number of things you have come up with. One of the things is messing up, messing up Parasatum, especially those ones which are involved in the energy production and the distribution, to be much more efficient and responsive so that they can be able to give better service. For example, one of the things which which many of you are in the CSD, when there are so many outages, for example, on every day basis, maybe you are you are experiencing an outage. This is one of the things we discovered that was very shocking. At one stage in our country, outages alone were contributing to more than one billion Kenya shillings. That's about what? It's about ten million dollars per month. And that as we have continued reducing these outages, that by the county, the productivity of the country should suffer. Employment should suffer. Electricity is extremely very, very important. When there is no electricity, a lot of people go home hungry because there are those people who are employed on a short term basis, on daily basis. If there is no electricity, they cannot work, so they go home. So electricity is very, very important. That's one of the reforms we are doing. The other reform we are doing at the moment, we have done very well, especially in our enabling registration, which led to a number of independent power producers starting to generate power in Kenya. We have got more than 20 IPPs signed and supplying power. At some stage we felt maybe the cost were also becoming very high, uh, very high. Because by the time we signed them some years back, for example, the cost of panel production was very high. Now the costs have come down, and they have also made a bit of money. And uh, we are negotiating with them with the aim of reducing this cost because there is also pressure from the customer that we reduce the cost of electricity. But most important is we are not ordering anyone to reduce the prices of electricity, we are just negotiating because we have a lot of regard for any agreement we have entered with, into, with any person who is, who is, who is doing uh, power generation in the country because of a very, very level legislation we have with the country. In short, the reforms we are undertaking in the energy sector are supposed to strengthen the energy sector align, bring in efficiency, transparency, governance, and accountability as key pillars in the production agenda.